Recording now. All right. Um, my name is Emma Maggart, M-A-G-G-A-R-T. I'm with the Indiana Historical Jewish Historical Society. Uh, this is October or it's November now, November, November 2nd, November 2021. 2nd. Wow. And I'm here yeah. with uh, Fran Ottenheimer. Can you please spell your last name? O-T-T-E-N-H-E-I-M-E-R. Awesome. All right, so let's start with uh, what year you came to the community and where you're currently living. Well, I came, really came in 1951, and I'm living in Sherville, Indiana now. I lived in East Chicago for about two and a half years. I lived in Munster for 40 years, and I've been here like 26 years. So I'm a really old lady, if you will. <laughs> no, it's a lot of great experience. Um, so what originally caused you to move to Indiana? And where were you from before that? I was from New York and I met my husband at college and got married right after college. We lived in New York for about, oh, two years. And then we moved back here and he went to law school and after graduation proceeded to practice in East Chicago and uh, unfortunately died early, but here I am. Yeah. Um, so I guess um, we can start with what, so he was a lawyer, you said? Yes, he was, a, as was his father and grandfather. Okay, so it's a family tradition to be in that. Oh, no, well, and I have a son and a grandson. Oh, so that's great. All the way have, through. Right. Um, so with the differences um, in the community, I guess we'll just go back to originally Chicago to... Right. Um, moving to Munster, um, were you part of a, a different Jewish community in each city you were in? No, we've all, well, my husband's grandparents were charter members of Temple Bethel okay. in Hammond. So of course, and my husband's parents were very, very active in the, in the temple. I mean, extremely active. So of course we joined there and I've been a, a member ever since. It's a Temple Beth Hell, of course, has moved to Munster, but uh, prior to that, it was in Hammond. And uh, uh, I can tell you about the family, but. Yeah, I'd love to hear about the family. Know? I don't know what you want to know. Yeah, um, so you said your husband's parents were very involved. Um, what were their names and what was their involvement? Well, their names were Lester and Alta Ottenheimer. My father-in-law during the war, when there was no rabbi, uh, conducted all the services and led the congregation. He knew no Hebrew, but his prayer book was completely transliterated. So he was able to work from the transliteration. He put out the monthly bulletin. He did everything during those days when they could not find a rabbi during the war. And my mother-in-law, who had a beautiful voice, sang in the choir. And uh, I remember Florence Hirsch from Hammond played the organ. And every Friday night we went to temple and that was it. And you have to remember that uh, my husband's parents lived during the depression and there wasn't much to do, but they could go to temple and find uh, companionship and everything for very little cost at that time. So of course the temple became the central focus in their lives at that point. It's great uh, to have that. Um, so Temple Bethel has now moved, it's in Munster, correct? Right, that is correct. Um, yes. And your family has stayed involved in the, at each point to all the different um, places it's moved. Right, right. Um, so with your family being lawyers, um, would you say that the, like the composition of the congregation making up Temple Bethel, is it tend to be people in that line of work? Is it oh my God. Um, it's all so over the communities? Oh my gosh, it's so different from when I was first introduced there. It, it's just changed so much. Even the services have changed, everything has changed. But you have to realize that's from 1951 to, to 2021, that's a lot of years. It is. So uh, it, uh, it just isn't, nothing is the same, you know. What are some of the major changes you'd say if you had to like pick the top three? The top three changes, well, it's, for my way of speaking, and I'm not a, an expert in any of this, I feel it's more conservative than reform. Um, that's one. Number two, the complexion of the whole um, congregation has changed. Uh, 
we have many, many converts, and which is wonderful, which is great, which we didn't have then. And I'm um, trying to think what else. Well, of course, and we are so small because there's no young people staying or moving into this community. It is all middle-aged or older people. And we do have a Sunday school and we do have some young children, nothing the way it was, but this is not a growing, thriving area, I don't believe. So that's, that's what I would say was happening here. Um, okay. um, um, so back when you first became involved in this community, um, how many families roughly would you say were, were a part of it? Well, I would say way over 200, over mm -hmm. 250 now. I don't even think we have 120. Okay. I mean, we have yeah. now combined with the Reformed Temple from Olympia Fields in Illinois because they too, their congregation was uh, diminishing and they lost their temple. We still have our building. And so now both of us occupy the same building and, uh, and we use the same rabbi. Otherwise it would be very difficult for us to afford a rabbi. I tell you, everything has changed. Yeah. It really sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so, and you know, I, I'm so old that when I uh, ask, I have no one to ask about old timers that I remember, you know, yeah. not necessarily temple people or Jewish people, but you know, uh, my husband was very involved in East Chicago and every time there's something about some history or something in East Chicago, I'm at a loss as whom to ask because there's not too many of us left. But anyway, yeah. that's another problem. Not you. No, and it's all it's all part of it, right? Trying to that's why we're here trying to collect oral histories. Okay. Yeah. So can uh, you tell my me? my husband's family is really an interesting family. I would love um, to hear about them. Tell me what tell like, me what you can. He is like he was like a fifth generation American. My son was a sixth generation American. Not on my side, on his side. His forebearers came to this country in the 1860s and they were peddlers. They went south and settled in Arkansas. And his great, great ancestor, Daniel Ottenheimer, decided in 1847 to go to the gold rush. So he packed up and took a covered wagon and went to the gold rush. And unfortunately he didn't find gold, but he found uh, a bride, Sally Brown, B-R-A-U-N, and brought her back to Little Rock. And from there, a big Ottenheimer family. And uh, for a while they were, sometimes when I travel and I meet people from Little Rock and they hear my name Ottenheimer, oh yes, they knew. <laughs> I mean, it was a very well-known family there. In fact, uh, there's a street in uh, Little Rock that's called Clinton Street, and the one that dissects it is Ottenheimer Street. So, right. yeah. Anyway, Abe Ottenheimer, one of the descendants of Daniel, came up and he was in the furniture, no way. I don't know what he was doing in Little Rock, but he came up here and he was in the furniture business and he decided to become a lawyer. So the, in those days, you didn't have to go to law school. So he, oh, I have to cut it short. My uh, 